What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. I'm your host, JC Groves. And I did forget to ask you, do you want to be Nathan or Brian? Well, let's see. I didn't have lunch with anybody controversial that has believed some whack theology this week, so I can't be Nathan. But I also didn't have a tweet this week that made a bunch of people mad, so I can't really be Brian. Well, I guess you just got to be yourself then. I just got to be myself, which by the way, myself is David. I am one of the hosts of the 26 Letters podcast. And of course, with me, it's not actually JC Groves with a more feminine voice, but instead (laughs) my wife, Samantha, the co-host of 26 Letters and her actual voice. Hey guys, my actual voice. (laughs) So honey, what's going on this week? Well, this week, the guys are starting their three-week sabbatical, and they messaged us because they said, you know what? If we can't give a bomb episode this week, I know who I can trust to give a dope episode this week. And And so they came to us. (laughs) So honey, do you know what this episode is going to be like? Mm, Nope. Tell me. So this episode is going to be like the key change in a, in a choir special or a um, individual special right before the preaching. So the portion of the song where revival breaks out. Right. That's the only part of the song where the Holy Spirit is allowed to move. <laughs> so they saved the best episode about music for last. And we are going to give you guys our music episode that we recorded for our podcast. And I hope that you enjoy it. Is this the part where we get to say, let's go? Oh, totally. I've been practicing this ever since JC asked us to cover their podcast this week. And ever week. since you knew that you've always just wanted to be JC, right? Absolutely. All right. Which honey. was yesterday. Exactly. <laughs> Take it away. <clears throat> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> You know what makes women stupid is college. Jesus was not a bartender. Hi, man. Two. You have lost your mind. Long tongue heifers have given me a lot more trouble than heifers wearing breeches. And you know that. Say amen right there. One. Let me tell you something, bozo. They'll be selling frosties in hell for this boy. Put on a pair of pink underwear. Amen. I sucked my thumb till I was 14 years of age. Hi, man. Okay, honey. So the letter M is what number in the alphabet? Like what what number place? Um, spitballing, I'm gonna say 14. No. 13? 13. Okay, 13. And that means that... We're halfway through. Yep, so we are halfway through the alphabet, the letters of the alphabet with the letter M. So that's really exciting. You know what else is exciting? Uh, That tomorrow is my last day of school and then start summer break. (laughs) Yes, and then you know what's even better than that? Uh, Quiet Place 2 comes out Yeah, you read my mind. That's exactly (laughs) right. No, you just, I picked up on all of the hints as you were messaging me. Are you going to see that this weekend? Should I wait to see it with you? Well, this weekend being because you're going to be headed out of town and you're going to be visiting a friend. I'm going to be all by my lonesome here. And so I just wanted to make sure that you were not going to go see that movie without me. Don't worry. So, but if anybody here is planning on seeing it, Make sure that you watch the first one. And if you live in Johnson City, we can have a watch party. <laughs> oh. Can we? Well, I mean, like we could all go to the theater together. That's kind of fun, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's good. Um, unless you're IFB. So the RFP has camp meetings. We have movie theater. We have movie house I almost gatherings. said hookups, but oh. <laughs> that doesn't sound No, right. no. No hookups here. <laughs> but you know what is... Uh, you know what happens with movies, honey? Is uh, that after a movie is released, people review them. So we're going to use this time to read some reviews or a review that someone left us on Apple Podcast. So they said, I am loving the 26 Letters podcast. This husband and wife duo are hilarious and so entertaining, which first of all, that just made me feel like Batman and Robin. That's so, right. Thank you. But anyway. Coming up in an IFB church all my life, I readily identify with their stories. Stories with serious implications, but shared with charming and witty husband-wife banter. This morning, I burst into laughter thinking about sheep with nerdy glasses watching in horror as the shepherd broke another sheep's leg. Great podcast. Cannot wait for the next episode. You know, another husband-wife duo instead of Batman and Robin, because they weren't a husband-and-wife duo. Sure. Bonnie and Clyde. 
Yeah, but, but they, be, they be dead, so. Well, and they made people. They be murdered. <laughs> and they be, well, they were be met murdering. <laughs> they murdereth. Back in the day, it was bad. When in doubt, murdereth. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, the lamb, uh, I really enjoyed talking about that. And it is just kind of funny to think about these little sheep taking notes as the shepherd breaks their leg. Um, someone else had reached out to us and um, it said something about the episode. And they were basically listening in the car with their, uh, with their wife. And they said, uh, my wife and I listened to the L episode together and it was so good. She was almost in tears laughing about the paddle with the Proverbs verse on it. And she had remembered the story of the shepherd breaking the legs too. So what's kind of funny but not funny is we were joking around about that paddle having the inscription of the memory verse. Yeah. One year for um, Father's Day, our church made and the pastor like put a Bible verse on the paddle. Was and it that one? I don't, I don't remember, but handed those paddles out to the fathers for Father's Day. Wow. Yep. I am I am speechless. In New Jersey, <laughs> man. Like what? Yeah, New Jersey is is not the state to be doing that in, but hey, no one I, I think of that what um Mark Lowry says. You know, he says our pastors may not always be right, but they're never in doubt. <laughs> so kudos to them for just being bold and full sending it. Yep. Of course. So of course this week's letter isn't about the letter L though. We're past we're past that. Yes, we're moving on to bigger and better things like the letter M. Yep. Uh, M for mumbo. Mumbo jumbo. Mumbo jumbo. <laughs> Wumbo. But honestly, some of your suggestions, we had a lot about modesty. Mm -hmm. I just, oof, that is so much to unpack. That might come with our purity episode that we talk about. But yeah, that's a big thing in the IFB. It is. And then a lot of people talked about the man of God. Mm -hmm. Or MOG. Or MOG. As he is lovingly called. That's right. This is the guy who's full on in charge in the church. And someone said movie theaters, but clearly they didn't grow up that IFB because then they would have said movie house. That's right. Or cinema. Yeah, or cinema. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me, it makes me think about when some people say, we don't go to the beach. We go we to the go coast. To the shore. Oh. Or we go to the ocean. Oh, yeah. Because the that beach makes is me so mad. The beach is sinful. Apparently, it's just what you call it. It's not what it actually is. It's right. sinful. Exactly. Somebody said microphones, as in handhelds, are a big no no, which I've never experienced that. Yeah, that is my. The big no no's for us were like the cheek mics. Right. The yeah. cheek mics were a big no no. So maybe this person, they just do like the little tie clip ons. Because, well, here's the thing. If you don't need the tie clip on, then maybe you just won't wear a tie anymore. Well, how are you supposed to sing without handhelds? You've never seen people sing yeah, with the clip ons? No. Oh, I have. Okay. It's kind of weird, but. Yeah. Well, moving on, someone else said uh, mixed race marriages or relationships. Like us, honey. Like us. We'll save that story for another day as yes. well. Yep. Tune in to the letter R to find out what this fascinating story is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shout out to someone who said Emstead for Micah. You know who you are, buddy. Yep. You we, know won't, your... we won't send your last name out through the airwaves, though. Yeah, but we love you. We love your siblings. And we love your parents. Very much. Yep. And last but not least. Mixed bathing. Which I didn't know about this until I got to college, you know, um, what mixed bathing was or the, the phrase, but mm -hmm. I'm sure you probably heard about it oh absolutely and i just heard many a sermon about how wrong mixed bathing was and it was really funny because eventually we got to the point where we could mix bathe and really guys this is just guys and girls swimming in a pool at the same time and i got really jealous of the churches that if the girls were just swimming on their own then they could just wear their bathing suits they didn't have to wear yeah. the dark t-shirt with the culottes on top of them even when it was just girls, we had to do the whole shebang. So I would get really jealous of the girls that could just swim in their swimsuits. So even if it was just you guys, you had to wear a dark shirt with culottes to go swimming? Yep. Because, you know, can't have my best friend lusting after me, apparently. Uh, well, these days. <laughs> um, but I will say this. If you would have been serious about swimming in your training, and uh -huh. you would have been swimming in your the culottes. The IFB would have been a really, really good, good place yep. for you because... Then when you were actually just in your normal, normal. bathing suit, you'd be like, wow, yeah. I am literally 35 pounds lighter. I'm a dolphin, basically. 
Because, <laughs> I mean, culottes are freaking heavy when they're dry. Yeah. It, so could you imagine a dripping wet pair of culottes? Right. It's it's like those people that train with ankle weights to so they can jump higher and, and run faster. That would be like you. It's like showing up to the swim meet. Michael Phelps is doing that thing where he like flaps his arms and hits his back. <laughs> and you're just like, eh, crack I'm your neck. I'm just doing some uh, jumping jacks and wet culottes. Yeah. <laughs> You crack your neck both ways and then you like you drop your culottes. But when you drop them, it's like a big cloud of dust <laughs> settles because of how heavy they are. And you're like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> Honey, what does the letter M actually stand for this week? For today's episode, the letter M stands for music. And I know what some of you are thinking. You're like, wait a second. We already had an episode about hymns. But let me tell you, it goes a lot deeper than just hymns. Right. I think, well, before we get into this, honey... Why don't you explain to the listeners what exactly is music? Well, this is a very broad subject, but one that if you grew up in the IFB, it was a hot button issue. According to the Oxford Dictionary, music is vocal or instrumental sounds, or both, combined in such a way as to produce beauty of form, harmony, and expression of emotion. Okay. So... We were reading and doing some research, and um, one thing that I found, which is a little interesting tidbit, um, but that's according to the popular music streaming service, Spotify, which we do not have. Go YouTube music. Well, and what makes me sad about that is that we don't get like our year-end rap or whatever. Bro, the... Nobody cares what you listen to anyway, <laughs> so you're welcome for not having to embarrass yourself. Someone said something that was like... Um, Shout out to that song, that one song from Ratatouille for messing up my year in rap because that's like their most listened to song. Um, but and any, everything else was like not Ratatouille not at all. The, the blessings, <laughs> blah, blah, this week, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, um, yeah, so according to Spotify, there are over 1,300 music genres in the world. So that's 1,300 music genres, uh, probably more than that. But some of the peculiar ones include Norwegian hip hop, Swedish reggae. And Spanish punk. There's also black sludge. Math rock. Wow. I, wow. Are you sure it's not meth rock? It's math rock. Math rock, which that just makes me think of schoolhouse rock. Yeah. Which that should be its own genre. Uh, but then you got vapor wave, but then you also have no wave. So all these different types of music coming at you for a grand total of 1300 genres. Shout out to the music artists who are breaking the ground for middle wave. We appreciate you guys too. Mm -hmm. um, we but, see you. Yeah. So Spotify published a list of the 50 most obscure genres um, in their service. And these also <laughs> include, honey, what's the first one? Cat step. So I don't know if that's like dubstep, but with cats. Maybe meowing? <laughs> Is it? And then you Like have, when the beat drops, you just get a bunch of meows. Yep. And then you have drone folk skewy or squee. I, I, I think they meant she. she. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, S K W E E E. So squee. And then vegan straight edge. So I guess this is music what? that doesn't use animal products. Okay. Yeah. Maybe the people that make this music are all vegans. Right. Yeah. My, one of my recent favorites within the last year mm -hmm. is Mongolian throat music. So if you guys yeah, don't know what that is, that, some special stuff. It is fantastic. If you guys just go to YouTube, type in Mongolian throat music, um, you'll see what we're talking about. I will link my favorite one in the show notes so that you can see what we're talking about. But enough about our preferences. Now we're going to get into the church preferences. So if you're growing up IFB, music has two classifications. That would be Christ honoring and those specific words or worldly right you never you never heard the word music just as music you always had to hear it as christ mm -hmm. honoring music or god honoring music yes yeah or worldly or secular so spotify has 1300 genres but the ifb has two that's right they Only mainstream that process man <laughs> they streamlined you mean yeah that's what i meant <laughs> yeah no mainstreaming in the ifb that's for sure um yeah but so when we say christ honoring music so you bring your friend into the church service with you. They're sitting there and the preacher starts preaching about how you need to listen to Christ honoring music. What does that mean, honey? So I'm going to tell my friend, first of all, there will be no beat. So if you have no rhythm, you will fit right in. <laughs> yeah. Um, and when I say beat, it's kind of... Um, That's probably why the majority of the IFB is white. But. Probably. But uh, so beat would be like, I love rock and roll. You know, there's like 
dun, you could kind of bob dun, your head dun, even just as yeah. you're singing it okay so that's a beat so there will be none of that in the church service and you will probably only have a piano very possibly some guitar and depending on the size of your church you might even have a small orchestra like the church that we were just at mm -hmm. their orchestra was like two violins and a cello right or if you go to like a temple yes the crown college they have a bunch of instruments going mm -hmm. on they there. have a whole like side section of orchestra right so and then of course the opposite end of that worldly music is pretty much just anything other than what we just said was Christ honoring music. Yes. And so make sure you warn your friend because they might get into some conversation with someone else in the church and they might want to try to fit in a little bit and they'll be like, oh yeah, I love this music. My favorite band is Casting Crowns. No, 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 no. Don't talk about Casting Crowns. Right. That's just as worldly as... Like Megadeth. Yeah. Slayer. Absolutely. Yeah. I was going to say Pink, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my mind just like immediately gravitates towards towards your uh, heavy, heavy metal, metal and, days and, yeah my, my emo <laughs> days um but anyways so that's pretty much as far as a definition and classifying where we're at so that puts us in the context of what we under need to understand however music for in large part has always been i think a hot button issue for a lot of people and it's been around for a long time mm -hmm. so we're going to go back to the very beginning the very beginning. Think as far back as you can go and go a little bit further. All right, guys. Here we go. Buckle in. Man, I'm so excited for this movie. What movie? Earth. <laughs> Day five. Day five. <laughs> That's right. Opening credit scene. Here we are, folks. You were just created. You were just created, but you're not just any creation. You're a bird. You're a bird. A singing creation. That's right. And you're just chirping along, cheeping along, <laughs> tweet tweeting tweet along. Yeah, tweet tweeting along. <laughs> Minding your own business. Yep. When all of a sudden, the next day, some weird looking thing walks up to you, looks at you and goes, yeah, you sound good. I'm going to name you bird. And that's just been your name for centuries and centuries. You're a bird. Yep. So, and you're just chilling there and you're like, excuse me, my name is Cheryl. Cheryl. Isn't that what you would name your bird? Sure. I don't no. know. I've never thought about what I would name my bird. I don't know. Maybe uh, if you've seen Good Feathers. <laughs> you, know. you mean instead of Good Fellows? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> From the Animaniacs. You don't know about that? The one pigeon that's like the, uh, like he's like the God Pigeon or whatever. Oh, I never really watched the Animaniacs. Like I know who they are, but I never actually oh, watched them. Oh, you uncultured swine. Also created on the, well, maybe the fourth day. I thought you meant Animaniacs. You oh. mean swine. <laughs> yeah, swine. <laughs> Anyways, the point is you're a bird. You're singing. And this guy comes up to you, names you bird. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's what you've been known as. And you know what? You're known as a bird and people know that you like to sing. That's right. And that's kind of the most earliest historical record of singing that we have. That's right. Day five of the world's existence. Right. And I imagine since then... You know, humans were probably tapping their foot. Um, I think we read somewhere that the earliest forms of music and musical expression was probably percussion. Yeah, really just people banging on solid objects right. with sticks or their hands or whatever. Exactly. Yep. Um, but if you're talking about the Bible, then I think the first verse that we read that talks about music is Genesis 4, 21. Honey, can you read that? His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all who play stringed instruments and pipes. Yep, so this was a few generations after Cain, and we just be this guy who's the father of all those who play instruments. And then, of course, from there, we know that music plays a big role in Hebrew culture, mm -hmm. right? All throughout the Bible, we see references to music. I mean, we even have a whole book that's just music. You mean the Song of Solomon? Well, 
Maybe that's that one. dirty music. That's dirty music, right? <laughs> no, it's interesting. I think I actually read somewhere that the Puritans would not read out of that, or like it would be frowned upon to read from the text of the Song of Solomon from the pulpit. Wow. Yeah, very intimate. I mean, even now we don't really see people venturing no. to give you a message out of the Song of Solomon. No, no. But of course, you know, you have the Psalms, right? It's just uh, a bunch of songs, but the point still stands. The Bible talks a lot about music. We'll get to that in just a second. So if we're going back to the much broader definition of music, historians can agree on pretty much six periods, and this is a very simple, broad um, survey of music, and historians will agree on six different periods. All right, so period number one, we have the medieval or middle age music. This is kind of described as being a Gregorian chant or also what's called a plain chant. A plain chant because there is no music involved. There are no instruments playing and it is just a large group of people in a pretty monotone chant. And this is what was used all of the time in church. And it was pretty much the only music of that period. Right. You couldn't just go to like guitar cent- or like ye old guitar center or whatever and like <laughs> go rent a fife and start playing around, right? right. Most people didn't have access to instruments They were just trying to survive. And what's really interesting about this is the church was really very controlling of the arts in general Mm -hmm. and music being part of the arts. But towards the end of the 14th century, the church kind of loses a little bit of its hold on the arts. And so people start experimenting with music and we get the Renaissance period. Yep. So this is the second age, the Renaissance. We're talking about Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Same guy. (laughs) Leonardo the Ninja Turtle. (laughs) All of them. All the same people, right. Uh, But musically speaking, we have people experimenting with Cantus Firmus, which... Cantus Firmus is really just a fancy foreign way of saying a pre-existing melody. So if you remember back to our hymns episode, when David said that he really likes when a church takes maybe an old hymn and puts a modern tune to it, that would be a church experimenting with the Cantus Firmus. Yep. Like this last Sunday, we just sang um, Nothing But the Blood Mm -hmm. of Jesus. Fantastic. And it was not the basic hymn version. Yeah. They were experimenting with Cantus Firmus. Right. All right, so then this moves on to the third period of what historians believe is the next one for music history, and that would be the Baroque period. So this is the 17th and 18th century, and Baroque actually comes from the Italian word Barocco or Barocco. Barocco. Great, honey, which means bizarre. And it kind of really sticks with that description because we did start experimenting in the Renaissance, but now we're getting funky and there's a twist to music. We're using different sounds and the two most notable types of music that come from this period was the instrumental music and the operatic music. Yep. So you think about people heading to the Italian opera. La. Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. La, 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 <laughs> la. Right, so all this those is things. that time. All right, so next we move into the classical age, and this is from the 1750s to about the 1820s. This is when the middle class gains more of a widespread access to music. Before, music was really just for educated people and people in um, not hierarchy. What's it called when you know? Aristocracy? Yes, that's the word. Uh, but classical music was really, and I think this to be very funny because not too many people listen to classical anymore, but that was the music for the common man. And it was considered to be a dumbing down of the music so that they could understand it. That's interesting. Yeah. So like, you know, during this time, this is peak Beethoven, for example, mm-hmm. um, during this, this period. Um, then we move on to the Romantic period which is the 1800s to the 1900s. This is focusing on telling a story, expressing your emotion. Uh, There's a fuller melody in use for imagination. Yes, and when I'm teaching literature, I have to remember to tell my students, this is not just love and, oh my goodness, you're so handsome and how can I woo you? That's not what romantic means. It just means being in touch with your emotions. And there are a lot more emotions other than love and lust. Was Poe a romantic? Poe is considered to be a romantic, but definitely more on the gothic end of things. Because when you think about his writing, it's very dark and deep and heavy. So romantic, yes. All lovey-dovey, not really. Gotcha. Who else is an example of a romantic? So you have um, 
not Walt Whitman, the other WW, uh, William Wordsworth. This is the guy that wrote about the daffodils dancing and the clouds floating over the hills. Gotcha. Um, a lot of times nature really runs into romantic literature. All right. And then last but not least, this brings us into Honey, the last stage of music. And this is even still a very broad definition of a stage of music, but it's the 20th century. And here again, we are experimenting, but now we're experimenting more with technology. So this is the defining aspect of this period of music. Yes. Right. Um, we get all kinds of crazy instruments. I'm sure my favorite is the theremin. Which I didn't know I knew about. So I didn't know it by its name. But then when you showed it to me, I was like, Psh, yeah, everyone knows what a theremin is. Right. It's either that or some guy in New York City playing the drums, but with like a bucket upside down. Yes. And then like manipulating with his Those foot. Those contractor buckets for yeah, yeah. Lowe's. <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly. So the 20th century brings you a flourish of different people in music. You have people like Frank Sinatra, Taylor Swift, the Gaither Vocal Band, and also the Crown College Trio. All of these artists still fit under the 20th century category right the 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 sixth stage of music history yes yep um, but this is a very basic view of his of the history of music of course this isn't a history podcast nor is it a music podcast so we're going to just stick to what we know best and what we are concerned about and that is how music matters within the ifb but to understand this we of course have to go back to the 1950s it's their favorite time period all right, honey, so it's 1950, all is right in the world. Yep, the kids are in the family room watching the last episode of Leave it to Beaver. I'm smoking my cigarette, wearing my pearls, wearing my lipstick, high heels, full church outfit, and there's an apple pie in the oven. And the house is spick and span. Yep, and what did I do all day? Nothing. Maybe, I was kidding. You well, worked. I may have worked. I don't know, but who knows what I did. <laughs> um, but I got home and everything was spick and span. Or is it spick and span or spam? Span. Spam is that nasty food that comes in a can. That's true. Yeah. Spick and span. This is like my honky dory. Yes. <laughs> You're spick and spam and I'm honky dory. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is right in the world. This is mm -hmm. peak American Christianity. This is pre civil rights. Amen. This is pre taking prayer out of schools. Amen. And most of all, this is in the 1950s is pre. 60s and 70s right which is we know which we know is when america basically went to pot mm -hmm. right so yep. honey went to hell in a handbasket hell in a handbasket that's what we should have an h for is for hell in a handbasket <laughs> um but yeah so uh, what did the 60s why is the 60s and 70s so revolutionary to peak american christianity well mostly i think a lot of people would credit it to the hippie movement um but also rock music Free love. Yeah. So, I mean, the 60s, we see the Beatles, we see the Rolling Stones, um, lots of different bands, um, and really starting to question authority, question... Oh, and that is not allowed right. in the IFB. Exactly. No, and no, so, no, no. Um, you know, between the, the rock movement, the hippie movement, social reforms, cultural shifts, uh, protesting the Vietnam War, all these things, uh, there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. And we see, we, we think we're losing the fabric of the American home. And so the IFB does what it does best. Hunker down and yell at everybody that's changing their ways. Right. And they said, we're not changing. And we ain't compromising. That's right. Um, but this attitude of not changing or compromising, this is basically going to define what is acceptable and what is worldly and wicked. And we're going to see this mindset really affect music and not just music in the church, but also the music that you are going to be listening to in your home. Right. Like what you have on your Walkman, mm -hmm. your What you allow on your massive radio that sits in your family room. Yep. Yeah. The church is going to judge you based off of what you allow your children to listen to on there. And if it's not howdy doody, you're in deep trouble. You're in. Yeah. You're in deep duty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's transition here real quick. Honey, have you ever read Dante's Inferno? Well, of course I've read bits and pieces of Dante's Inferno, but that's a hefty, uh, hefty task. Well, yeah, it's one. It's I think it's written in like Latin or whatever, like really old Italian. Yeah. So, but I mean, I know what it is. I know it's this epic poem about the different layers of hell. Right. So this is a poem written in the 14th century written by honey. Can you pronounce his name? 
Dante Alighieri. Let's try that. Can you do that, but more Italian? Dante Alighieri. Gorlami. That's anyway, what I said. Yeah. <laughs> Dante Alighieri was a 14th century epic. Uh, which this so he was an Italian poet and Inferno, which is the name of the poem, was an epic poem in the 14th century, where this author Dante tells the story of himself. So this is first person, and he is the main character. Very uh, good, honey. First person, okay, okay. Yeah, and he is being guided through the nine circles of hell by another poet, which is I guess the fictional poet Virgil, or I don't know if this guy was real or not. But anyways, um, so he's guided through, and and this is where, if you remember, do you know who Gustav Dor is? I can't say that I do. So if you remember at the Crown College of the Bible, there's like these big pillars. Oh, is that the praying hands guy? No. Oh. What? I thought that was the sculptor that made praying hands. Sorry. Uh, anyway. No. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, that's because you didn't use a Becca. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Anyways, no, I'm joking. Um, but anyways, the this, like all those really detailed illustrations that are like blown up on canvas. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. And there's like okay. it's like the cover of every single book um, yes. written by Pastor yes. Sexton. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is Gustav Dor, and um, the library at Crown actually had a copy of Inferno with illustrations by Gustav Dor um, in them, and they're very good, very detailed, very creepy. I mean, he goes through like lust, and he goes through hate and gluttony, um, and it's very detailed and creepy. Uh, my freshman year, I actually spent a lot of time in the library reading or trying to read inferno um and i never got through it but in similar fashion just as dante was guided through the nine circles of hell you listener we are about to guide you through the seven circles of the ifb music yep so we'll start from the bottom like the most depraved and and what you need to know is also inferno is actually part of a three-part series did you know oh. that I did not. So there's Inferno. Uh huh. What do you think comes next? Really, Inferno. No, he's he's making his way. Out. Oh, <laughs> Inferno Part Two. A oh, good so a good day to Inferno. <laughs> the Fast and the Inferno is anyways. Um, no, Inferno. Then it's Purgatorio, and then it's Paradiso. Oh, so you're getting out of hell. Yeah, because I think he's trying to okay. make his way back to his love. Okay. Um, and just like us, we are trying to make our way back to our true love, our first love. And that is God. And music. we know that we can... Oh, well, I was going to say well, that we can only express music. our true love to God when we listen to the right type of music. Right. So we're going to start out here at the bottom of the seventh circle. Um, so this is going to be... Go ahead. So honey. you love God the least if you identify it in circle number one. That's the way that this scale goes. Right. Of course, that was dripping with sarcasm. I'm not judging your love of God based off of your music. Right. So this is the lowest level. So this is you're an IFB, right? You attend an independent fundamental Baptist mm -hmm. church. But outside of the church house, you listen to whatever the heck you want. Right. You may experience slight guilt from time to time. But probably not. And if you do experience guilt, it's super fleeting. Yeah. All right. And then number two, honey, what is this one? So this is my favorite one, the social indulger. So you're pretty, you're pretty goody two shoes. But when you're around friends that you know, listen, you know, when you're around your friends that are in the first circle, you obviously have to blend in with them. Right. So you're like, oh, yeah, I listen to this music. And maybe you listen to some of it on the sides that, you know, you can sing along in the car when you're with them mm -hmm. or you can talk to them about it. But really, you're just a social indulger. It's not your thing, but you got to be cool. Right. All right. So then moving on to then next is the third circle mm -hmm. of IFB music, and that is country music. Yes. Maybe radio pop. Maybe. And when we say radio pop, we're talking about the radio friendly family versions of all of the songs. So all of the curse words are taken out. Right. Some of the inappropriate innuendos are taken out. Yes. You know. So you're kind of close, but. And really more country music because we know that country music somehow is better than rap and rock it's more acceptable yes because what who's who's the one that talks about king james and uncle sam oh toby keith toby king james, james and uncle sam. sam he's got the red white and blue, blue flying high on the farm, farm. simplified, simplified tattooed, tattooed on his left well, anyway sorry toby keith yeah all right so you were my jam for a little while yeah i have since grown up yeah i know there's a there's a few uh people that i knew um, I guess going to Crown that liked that song, especially they got hype when he said King James. 
That was like the of really, course. that was a really hype part. So, mm-hmm. all right. So we've left the third circle um, or um, the third bottom level. We're now going further up. We're now to level four. Yep. So this is the middle of the road. We're pretty good here. Um, we're not afraid to walk into the church building. Right, because this is the Christian versions of modern music, mm-hmm. otherwise known as... CCM, or Contemporary Christian Music. And Contemporary Christian Music covers it all. You've got the rap, you've got the pop, you've got the rock, you've got the ballads. They have something for everybody. Right, so if you like rock... You're going to listen to Skillet. If you like pop... You're going to listen to Francesca Battistelli. All right, you like rap... You're going to listen to Lecrae. And then again, country music, Christian country. Mm -hmm. Kind of a lot of different ones. But, you know, when you kind of come to your more maybe romantic type of Christian music and feeling the emotions or the ballads, you got like Mercy Me, Casting Crowns, King and Country. Yep. There's a plethora of them out there. Yep. Um now you're leaving the fourth level. You're headed well, up you're to the... Well, you're not completely leaving the fourth level because we have a 4.5. Right. Well, you've left the fourth level. You're about to enter into the fifth level. On your way, you look to the right. You get tripped up a little bit. Yep. And there you see... Fernando Ortega and Chris Rice. Yep. <laughs> Which I didn't really know about Fernando Ortega until I got married to you. Yes. Okay. So I think I might have said this previously when we were talking about hymns, but my dad did not like all of the holy is he like that type of music and that's when i was a kid that's a lot of the college cds that were being produced so when my dad found fernando fernando ortega he went all in so that's why i know who that is but fernando ortega is not completely in the third circle because even though he does sing a lot of hymns and church songs he also has some of his singer songwriter albums which aren't totally christian right all right so now we've left level four we're into level five and that's where we get the southern gospel music Mm -hmm. so of course your most beloved gaither vocal band brian free and assurance brian edwards and jc groves (laughs) gold city all of those guys now going to my public school self i have no clue what southern gospel music was So Southern gospel music is very interesting to me because there was a period of time where I wasn't allowed to listen to it, but then I was praised for listening to it at a later period of time. But that kind of sounds like a personal story, so we'll save it for a couple minutes from now. All right, so then you've you've grown out of Southern gospel music. You realize it's not as holy as you thought it was. Mm -hmm. You now enter into the next level, the sixth level. That is IFB college CDs, as well as... Well, you also have your evangelist CDs, and sometimes if your church is just blessed with a gifted pastor and pastor's family, you will have CDs that your pastor and his wife and family have recorded as well. Yep. And all of these kind of mesh into that same level for 100% church-approved appu- a church approved music. I guess church a pewed would also work, because like you said, in a pew in church. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So this reminds me of the time that I guess the Clark family came to church and because you're from New Jersey, yes. there was a camaraderie. Yep. And the next thing we know, we wound up with like 10 Clark CDs. Yeah. Brother Mike was just handing us every single one. And also part of me was like, I already have like five of these. But also he is so nice. I could literally not say a single bad thing about Brother Mike. Absolutely. I love him to bits and pieces. Yeah. He's and super that was, great. It's a good time. Glad they, glad they came and scored that cd with the that was the first time i heard the conversation dude that was your hype song Yo. forever that was your hype song oh my goodness <laughs> when the devil thinks he's got he has jesus <laughs> yeah but then he escapes well sorry <laughs> escapes not the right word <laughs> could you just see jesus oh quick the devil's not looking <laughs> like <laughs> sorry that's not the right word the devil thinks he has jesus but jesus in the song the stone is rolled away and Jesus got away. He is risen. Something like that. Yeah. So yeah, just, they say that like 20 times. But yeah. So, uh, but IFB college CD. So you got your Hiles CD group. You got the Crown Trio CD mm-hmm. group. Every so often they'll record a new one. Uh, I'm sure West Coast probably has a few of those. So you also have your evangelical CDs, which are like the Steve, um, oh, it's Galkin. No. The Crown College Bookstore would play him all the time. Oh, 
I don't, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. It's Steve somebody. I think I know what you're talking about, Mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, you have the traveling evangelist and he's like, make sure you stop at my table, you know, after the service to buy my book and also, you know, our accordion CD. Um, Our accordion CD. Yeah. And then the last one, now guys, congratulations. You've stuck it out. Mm -hmm. You've rejected everything. This is pure perfection. This is the holiest of holies. Right. You know, when we're going into the temple here. Yep. And this is the seventh level. What do we got? So this means that you are only listening to hymns, Gregorian chants, and bus songs. Yep. (laughs) But that's just for some fun variety. Yep. So everything else you've rejected, Mm -hmm. you can sing um, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. But you can also sing this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Oh. Well, you're shaking your shoulders here, vibing to the beat. Okay, well. I will restrain the shoulders and just sing the bus song. Yeah, there you go. So congrats. You've arrived to the seventh circle of IFB Music Standards Perfection. And this is probably a good transition because for me, I only stuck around this first circle. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no, you stuck around the first circle for a very long time. Then you jumped to the seventh circle. It was, well, yeah. So growing up, it was interesting because I would hear so many like i would hear messages about music and christ honoring music versus worldly music and you know what the worldly music will make us do um you know drugs and getting people pregnant and all these other things um (laughs) and i was like such a good kid like for the most part because my dad just absolutely put the fear of god into me (laughs) um knowing if i like came home with a b I'd well, so dead. you just listened to the songs about the drugs and the sex and the drinking. You didn't actually do the drugs and the sex and the drinking. No, I never even listened to that, honestly. I just, mm-hmm. I, I didn't. No, I listened to a lot of like emo music and like rap. Oh, no, 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 not rap. Um, Emo music and uh, maybe some dubstep and, and stuff like that. But <laughs> that, of course, all changed as soon as I got to the Crown College of the Bible. I jumped from circle one. I circumvented <laughs> sur- Southern Gospel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um <laughs> Fernando Ortega, don't know who he is, all these other people, and I jumped straight to hymns, specifically our own hymn book. Yep, the Crown College hymn book. Right, yeah. So, um, and it was interesting because I realized like when I dove really headfirst into this IFB thing um, and being consumed by that culture, I just, I wanted to do all the things right. And so I, in my car, I think... Um, one of the soccer players, um, shout out to Josh who like gave me some of his CDs. So I burned some CDs. Um, you had your own personal CD burning. No, 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 no. Not like on fire oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> from the laptop. Like he gave me a CD and like I burned the CD. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. But we'll get to that in just a second. Um, and of when you're like, talking about the IFB and music, you got to specify when right. you say burn CDs. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I got some, I made some CDs so that I could have Crown College trio groups and quartet groups that I would listen to. And that's like the only thing that I would listen to while I was at Crown. Wow. Um, just, and, just quick, cold turkey. Yeah. I didn't listen to anything else. Um, I had a con- I remember having a conversation with somebody in my dorm about sensual music versus spiritual music. I was like the first time I had ever heard that at all. N- never. The term sensual music? Yeah, I was like... Yeah, I don't really think I've heard sensual music, maybe secular. Well, and I was like, what the heck is sensual? And he was like, well, if it makes it tap your, if it makes you tap your foot, it's no bueno. So tapping your foot is sensual now. Yeah, it appeals to the flesh. It makes you want to dance. And of course, oh. we know that dancing is a big no-no. Yes, um, of course. And Except y- for Miriam when she was dancing because they crossed the red sea right or but, david know. when he danced before the lord yeah all but those things. we don't dance right um and then i and i just remember also too there was one time we went to a youth event i think i've talked about this before and we had a like a campfire burning and you were supposed to bring cds and shirts and jeans and all kinds of nonsense and dvds and so i think i brought like a Blink-182 CD, maybe. Um, and I was like, okay, I guess so I don't show up empty-handed. And I threw that in the fire. But I think I kept the CD. So you just threw the case? <laughs> wow, big brain moves. Yeah, that's Honey, right. that's awesome. <laughs> and then I'll tell you what changed, though, is that when when we went to England, and that was, I think, the first time I was introduced to um, Sovereign Grace music. Okay. And so... For those of you who don't know, yeah, you still bop to a, so- a Sovereign I Grace music song. I love so- Sovereign Grace music. Like most 
a lot of contemporary stuff that you hear on like K-Love and, you know, 106.9, The Light or whatever. <laughs> um, 89.7, The, the bridge, bridge Across to Truth. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just super repetitive stuff. But Sovereign Grace really, now, of course, the only albums, which ones did I listen to, honey? Well, you listen to the live recording That's one. That's all I listened to at first. Yes. It's only I would listen to. I didn't yes. want to listen to any of their more contemporary <laughs> stuff. But the Together for the Gospel live CD stuff, yeah. yes, ma'am. Well, and now you you love to listen to their kids' theology one. Oh, their kids' theology is <laughs> so is good. so lame. No, it is so good. Like the My Help. Oh, yeah. I remember my first year. No, actually, this might have been during my internship. And uh, the little pre-K kids were learning that song in yeah. music class. And for whatever reason, one day I was subbing in music class. And they were just so cute. They didn't know any of the words. But when it got to the chorus, they would go, my help. And they'd all jump in the air. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. So, but yeah, because those are just some experiences of mine and, and thinking about music and trying to please the Lord with, with what I listen to. Well, on that note, I guess my wicked sinful self will just take over. Oh, no, I mean, like, I'm I'm, I'm back to, like, meander. I, like, I kind of, I flirt with all the little circles, you know? Okay. I, like, I'm transitional between all of them. <laughs> I'm transient. Okay. Well, honestly, for a very long time, I was a goody two-shoes. Um, even if I didn't agree with the rules, I was just always scared of being caught. So my rebellious streak... A lot of times was just me listening to contemporary Christian music before it was allowed in my house. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Like, for example. That stuff is trash. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just could like. Could you imagine praising God to a beat and getting in trouble for it? Yeah. <laughs> so I remember when I was given my dad's old alarm clock and, you know, those classic alarm clocks where you could set your beep, 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 or you could have the radio wake you up. Yeah. Well, I remember finding the contemporary Christian station in our area, which happened to be Star 99.1, uh -oh. which is still in existence. And that is what I tuned my alarm clock to. And I would have the alarm go off, but then immediately I would turn it down because I didn't want to get in trouble for listening to the contemporary Christian station. And I would continue to get ready to that radio station in the morning, but of course it was at a very low level. So that was my kind of testing the boundaries phase right there. But also because of how much contemporary Christian music was preached against, I kind of felt like, hoo hoo, man, I really am a baddie. Like this is something they're preaching against all the time and here I am listening to it. Honey, you are a baddie. Thank you. And <laughs> <laughs> so before As the kids say these days. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to all the younger listeners that are cringing right now. All right, continue. Anyway, so before everyone had an iPhone, we all had to listen to music on our iPods. So my mom had gotten an iPod Nano um, a while ago. And of course, once she got an iPhone, the iPod transitioned to me. And at that time, all of us as a family, we were listening to contemporary Christian music, but we had to keep it hush hush. Okay. So when she gave me the Nano, it had all of like a ton, I think like 673. When was this? Oof. Were you in high school? I might've been in like eighth or ninth grade. Okay. Yeah. Um, had a ton of contemporary Christian music on it. And then that's what I listened to. And, you know, we would hear it preached against at camps, at different get togethers that we would have. And almost once a year, young ambassadors would give out the music booklet by Carrie Schmidt called Music Matters. Yeah. Um, I think at one time I owned four copies of that book because it just kept getting handed out. Never read more than the front cover. So it could be a great book. I have no idea, but I never read it. Um, but then to branch out from my CCM phase, my grandpa was a really big gateway for me because he just loved Willie Nelson and country music. And so then whenever I would ride in the car with him, I got to listen to Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley. And then sometimes he would have the modern country station on in the, in the car. Oh, no. So I just quickly adapted to loving that stuff yeah which when we started dating and when we first got married i mean you loved oh country yeah music. i was super into it which surprised me because you're from the north yes i think it was just a way for me to feel connected to my grandpa went to a toby keith concert with my younger brother had a blast would go again in a heartbeat but anyway but when did you go to this concert we were we were in college okay so this is you're in college 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, there's that. But I do remember when we were in college my freshman year, I did not have a car. So my mom had to come and pick me up from college at the end of the semester. And of course, when you're in college, I'm just listening to what all of my friends are listening to, which is normal music or worldly music. So my mom picks me up. And I remember getting in the car and we're just driving down the road and all of a sudden she starts singing Happy by William Farrell or William Farrell, however the heck you say his name. Sure. And she just continues to sing along with the radio and I'm looking at her, but of course I can't say anything because I'm happy that we're listening and allowed to listen to this music now. So if I say something, I might screw it up and she'll be like, oh, you're right. We shouldn't be listening to this. So I just... Happily sang along for the 13-hour car ride. Like, yes, we're finally allowed to listen to this stuff. So that was really cool. But at one point, I was under deep conviction when I was like back, you know, in 11th and 12th grade. A deep, deep conviction for all of the CCM that was on my iPod Nano. Oh, no. And I brought my iPod into my youth pastor who proceeded to wipe all of the CCM with, of course, because I asked him to. He did not like just take it from me. Um, who proceeded to wipe all of the CCM off of my Nano. Thank goodness. And replace it with like 46 Southern Gospel songs. So I went from having like, which I'm sure if my mom had known, she probably would have been really mad because she had bought all of those CDs. Oh, that's right. And, you yeah. know, back when you had to purchase yeah, yeah. albums yep. and stuff from yep. iTunes. Yep. And she had bought all of those CDs, over 600 songs. And I just said, yeah, get rid of them. So, oh, Honey. Yeah. He cost for your like, mom a fortune. For like 46 songs in return. <laughs> but man, and this I is got why... a ton of praise from my youth pastor, from my pastor. And that just, that felt really good. And there it is. <laughs> Look at Sam. She's the example. She Yay. wiped her iPod clean. She took all that worldly music off of her iPod Nano, her casting crowns, her mercy me. And now she only has 46 Southern Gospel songs. <laughs> You're like the dog from the meme. And you're like, this is fine. Yep. 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 Totally cool. Yeah. I, w- I was embracing it. Yep. So let's go ahead and look at some pros and cons then of the way that the IFB approaches music. So the first pro that I can think of is I think it comes from a right spirit, right? Like I know it's they're very, we grew up very dogmatic about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it comes from that argument of we want to, there's concern over wanting to honor God. Again, at least we really hope that that is the motive. But even if your motive is right, it doesn't always mean that the way you go about your motive is right. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying there's something to be said about like, we want to make sure that we're pleasing God, that we're not doing anything that would offend him. Mm-hmm. Whereas you could swing the pendulum the other way and be like, Psh. listen to whatever you want. Whatever you want, everything goes. God is offended at nothing, which mm-hmm. we know is not true. Right. Another pro that you have is intentionally listening to Christian music. At least I've noticed that when I do that, it really does help my spirit. It puts me in a more spiritual mindset. You know, I'm able to kind of view things through a spiritual view, view things through a spiritual view. Yeah. When I am intentionally listening to the quote, right music. My mom would always say this growing up to us, that there was a study done in, I think either like an insane asylum or something like that. But okay, they were playing music that was like heavy rock and stuff and just like mm-hmm. people were going nuts. But then they started playing classical music or like peaceful music, quiet music. Yeah, I mean, even now, like, you know, just to be funny, sometimes you'll put on some of the crazy stuff you listen to in high school, and it makes me tense. Like, it yes. makes me very tense. Yes, yeah. very much so. And and so intentionally playing this music to, to put you in the right spirit is, is definitely a pro because what better thing than you can sit there and at least you're like, you know what, I'm thinking about the Lord, and that's good. Mm-hmm. Another pro is that maybe it can keep you from listening to that really nasty stuff, which is a little bit more difficult now because it's just the music is everywhere. It's easily accessible. Even if you don't have an iPod, you can still listen to the latest and greatest. Right. Like before you had to have a radio Mm -hmm. um, or a CD player. Yeah. Do you remember 
the Zunes, like before we could all afford iPods. Yes. I had no idea how to put music on that sucker, <laughs> yeah, that thing but sucked. I had one. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah. So uh, that was, music was not readily available to us. Yeah. But, like that. Right. So, but again, the pro is in the way that the IFE approaches music is it, it will intentionally keep you from listening. Parents will go out of their way to make sure that you're not listening to, you know, just dumb, dumb things, nasty things, drugs, alcohol, sex. Wings and things. pizza. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, another thing is that you can teach your kids that what you consume, not through your mouth, but what you consume is really important. And, I, and just even more than just kids, but like all of us, we should be careful with what we consume. And this goes from the range of anything sexual pornography um you know what movies we watch mm -hmm. um but music also falls into that realm too yeah especially like we just mentioned how it does affect your spirit so yeah yep. and then the last thing here as far as a pro is that you know the way when it comes to the way ifp approaches music you just don't have to guess what's good and what's bad if it doesn't fit in the first through third circle of the ifb music it's bad that's right if it's not a hymn, a bus song. <laughs> and maybe Southern Gospel. Maybe Southern Gospel. Then it's bad. It's just all bad. <laughs> Which, by the way, uh, with the Southern Gospel thing, so one thing that I learned recently um, was about BJU. Now, did you grow up around a lot of BJU people? No, not at all. Okay, so me neither. Um, but apparently, I knew the only thing I knew about them is that they had strayed away from King James onlyism. Yes, and, and that's why we didn't have anyone go there anymore. They, yeah, precisely. But they were very stringent on music, and so I asked this question mm -hmm. in, in the um, the recovering fundamentalist uh, forums there in, in in Facebook in the group, and a lot of people were just responding and saying like, "Yes, you were very you had to be quiet in the sanctuary, and it, everything was like operatic. It was orchestral." You just, there was a Very higher level. Like of, a level of reverence? Yeah, I think it had to do with like reverence. But to sing, well, somebody said that to sing Southern gospel was like a horrible sin. Wow. And you know, if it was drums, it's because drums come from like pagan rituals in Africa. And so that's why those are bad too. And so it's just, it's just funny to think like they moved, they weren't strict on the KJV thing, but music. I know, like if I had to pick, one of the two things to be more strict on when it came to being a good IFB -er, it would definitely be the KJV. Although like Bob Jones University wasn't actually ever IFB. Yeah, you're right. But they were very fundamentalist. I mean, we talk about Bob Jones Sr. and all them, right? So nothing we haven't mentioned before. Right. So those are our pros. Let's go ahead and move on to our cons. For your first con, it makes you doubt your salvation if you listen to, quote, worldly music because you think to yourself oh if i were a good christian i wouldn't be listening to the devil's music yeah there was several youth services where like someone would go up and they'd pray and then you see them crying at the altar and then after the invitation when they're reporting like who got saved you'll always see the one kid who got reassurance of their salvation and then and the next week they bring in their cds well no they would just talk about how like they're going to give up their CDs and, you know, oh, yeah. movies and, and things like that. So another thing is that you can grow a little bit desensitized to this music. And I'm not saying that you should not listen to music that is honoring and worshiping the Lord. But sometimes when it's all that you hear, you just learn to tune it out, just like Charlie Brown and his teacher. And the most important reason to listen to this music is because it is edifying to your soul and to your spirit and it helps put your focus in the right place. And if it's just going in one ear and out the other and you're not even noticing it, maybe you need something a little bit different every once in a while. Honey, are you saying that our listeners need to wallow in the mud so they can know what it's like to feel clean? Absolutely. Oh, really? No, I was just kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I mean... No, I like, like a good Taylor Swift song every once in a while. Yeah, but, but like, but it's true. Like <laughs> every you, day. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you do become desensitized. Yeah. Uh, like it just that's just how we are wired. Mm -hmm. I think as people. All right. Um, the next thing, of course, a con is that it it becomes a legalistic point, right? Um, things that you become very judgmental about and how you measure other people's Christianity. Mm -hmm. If they listen to sensual music, they're wicked sinners. Right. Their okay. salvation is not as appreciated 
as yours. All right. And the next one, um, music kind of gets lumped into that verse about being a peculiar people. Mm -hmm. So again, you're just taking Bible verses out of context and, you know, we're in the world, not of the world. And this specifically means that, you know, you do not listen to the Beatles or Iron Maiden or those kinds of things. So, yep. Yep. Another con, if you only listen to church music, you're missing out on some dope music. Yep. (laughs) There's just no way around it. Yep. Some dank music out there. Um, (laughs) Some good stuff. I mean, again, if you've never listened to Mongolian throat singing, You've not You're missing lived. out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so let's go ahead and move on to our prawns then. Yeah. So I guess the first is just kind of neutral, but the way with the in the way that the IFB approaches music, you're not spending money on concert tickets. You yep. may see a Southern gospel group come touring, but that's about it. Yeah. And you're going to maybe spend 25 to $35 on that concert ticket as opposed to hundreds yeah i mean like you're not waiting for concert tickets to drop and then all of a sudden they're like sold out within two seconds <laughs> and now you have to like donate your left kidney just so that you can afford to go see you know billy joel or something like that hey that was a fantastic night i mean i didn't sell my kidney but we did go see billy joel and yeah, it was, it was fantastic it was good all um right. then another one is that it is easy to choose your car presets for the radio. So we kind of already hit on this a little bit, but if you only listen to Christian music, you got about three radio stations, and that's it. So your presets in your car, one, two, and three. That's it. Yep. As If you listen to all of the different radio stations, you have to be like, ooh, do I like 96.3 better or do I like 97.5? Yeah. You know, no fighting. So this is such a hot but- hot button issue. And I think the important thing for us to recognize is go back and say, all right, well, what does the Bible actually say about music? And so I would just maybe recommend, um, there's a website, I've mentioned it before, that I really like. It's called Got Questions. And there's a few articles on here about like, what does the Bible say about music? What does the Bible say about contemporary music? Is rap okay for Christians to listen to. I remember going on a to a soccer game and we went to go play Ohio Christian University and we pull up and the first thing you hear is just like loud bass and you hear, I'm an F-A-N-A-T-I-C fanatic. I rep Christ till I D-I-E fanatic, <laughs> man. And just like just some of the looks on, on well, my face because it was just like, wow, this really sucks. Yeah. Um, but like some other people were in, in shock and horror. Like That is so funny. These Ohio Christians are, these Ohioans, man. <laughs> Tell you what, they're bad people. Um, But honey, when it comes to music, biblically speaking, what do we know? Well, we do know that music was used multiple times in the Bible for different reasons. It was used for celebrating. It was used for calming people down, like when David would come and play for Saul when he was in just, you know, one of his really bad moods. Um, it, it plays a very big role in the Bible. It's a part of worship. Um, mm-hmm. you, you, you also see Paul commanding Ephesians 5.19, I think it is, right, that we should speak to each other. Songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Right. You see Paul and Silas singing in the in the prison. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and those walls came crumbling down. That's right. <laughs> um, I think Spurgeon didn't allow instruments. They are just only ever saying a cappella. Well, so this was one of my favorite facts that you found. You talked about how some groups believe that we only see instruments in the Old Testament and not in the New Testament. This is just... So... If your church is completely following the Bible, the modern church, no instruments, not even a piano, you're just singing with your voices. Right. The instrument, because our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the instrument of the Holy <laughs> Ghost is our is our vocal cords. Um, oh, boy. Yeah. And so, but like, if you read some of these articles, it talks about like, honey, is a piano inherently sinful? Like just sitting there in a just corner? Just sitting there by itself. No way. Is a drum set inherently sinful? Nope. It depends on who you're asking, but in reality, <laughs> right, they, the, the actual answer is no. Um, Are they inherently good? No. No. Also no. Depends on how you use depends it. Depends on how you use it. And I, and I think, you know, some people will talk about like, well, you, you got to see where, where did the electric guitar come from? I'm like, okay, where did stained glass windows come from? Huh? Huh? Where'd they come from? Where'd they come from, <laughs> right? I mean, like the Catholic Church uses big stained glass windows. Does that mean that our church? But like there's plenty of IFB churches that still have them, right? Absolutely. And so we just... We need to, when it comes to church and how we treat each other, 
the important ethic, and I get it, it comes from a spirit of we want to honor the Lord. The important ethic is what? For us to love each other, Mm -hmm. to have unity. Because as much as you think the right choices of music are honoring to God, you also have to look at how you are judging somebody, and that is not honoring to God. Right. We see we, we, we see the Bible address division in the church more than we see what type of music should be played <laughs> in, the, in the church, right? Yeah. Um, you know, whether you're, um, what, you, what do you call the guy? The song, song leader. leader. Or the song leader uses like a little baton or he just waves his hand, you know, just but like we get so divisive over such such dumb things. And but, you know. And, Some people just like to have an argument. And, and that's true. And that's true. I read. I read somewhere. Someone said something about like classical music, because you know, like that's acceptable, right? Well, of course, right. Um, but then they also said like that can also be that's like our Western mindset, and so we're being a little bit more biased than we like maybe realize. Like, oh, classical music is okay, but you can't do say like a drum set because that comes from africa or something like that or like a banjo because that comes from africa i swear there are some people that you could agree with all of like if you're in an argument and then all of a sudden you agree with them they'll take a different stance just so they can start (laughs) fighting with you again yeah and and so as with anything guys study this out yourself if you're really concerned about something and you feel like if you listen to a certain thing that you're sinning against yourself or you're, you feel conviction in your heart about it, then don't do it. That's the beauty of individual soul liberty. And that's actually a good point because when we talk about individual soul liberty, we also need to talk about our preferences and how those affect our brothers and sisters in Christ, mm-hmm. right? So maybe for you, listening to Christian rap is totally cool. <laughs> maybe you're an F-A-N-A-T-I-C. It's my new bop. Yeah. But maybe your brother in Christ, when they hear rap music, it triggers them to think about, you know, what rap music normally is. So the ethic here, of course, is what? Love towards your brother. Love over freedom. Love over freedom. Yes, 100%. So. Well, we're going to go ahead and end this on a lighter note, just like always. And we have a top five list for you. So this top five list was super fun to make and it is top five songs or genres or artists that the world and the IFB can agree upon. Yep. All right. So number one, well, we'll start with the number five, number five and work Mm -hmm. our way down. Right. So number five, Hans Zimmer and John Williams. And if you're a little bit confused as to who the heck these people are, they're just your movie scores. Yep. These are guys that make the most famous like Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Jaws, all those things. Some, you know, you can't listen to like normal movie soundtracks. Right. With lyrics. Mm-hmm. Because those aren't appropriate songs. And classical music is kind of boring. Yeah. So you like meet in between mm-hmm. with the score that makes you think about the movie. Not going to lie though. This stuff was great study music when I was in college. Yes. Yeah. It helped me write a lot of papers. All right. Number four. So number four, we have the Piano Guys. And yeah, I mean, I guess their music is cool. I can appreciate their talent. But for whatever reason, the IFB eats this group up. Yo, Crown People threw down on some Piano Guys. Mm-hmm. Like, I rem- I did not know about these guys, un- about these yeah, Piano Guys. Until, <laughs> until I went I can- to Crown. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So then number three. We have Michael Buble. Now... Remember, we've already talked about how the 1950s are idealistic America. Now, this is peak American Christianity. Yes. So Michael Buble is allowed because a lot of his music is really just him singing Frank Sinatra songs. Right. So we're talking 30s, 40s, 50s, jazz music. Although I don't know how acceptable jazz music is, but... If it's sung by Michael Buble, it's acceptable. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Number two. All right. So we are getting pretty close And of course, in number two, we have our actual 1950s music. Uh, We actually both worked at Steak and Shake for a little while. Different Steak and Shakes because, of course, we were dating and we weren't allowed to work the same one. Correct. But anyway, um, any music that you would hear in Steak and Shake is allowed to be consumed in your ears if you're a good IFP Christian. Yep. So like Lollipop, for example, by the... um, 
Oh, I have no idea. I forget. But it's, I can it's sing like you a group the whole of song. it's like a group of ladies, the quartet. No, no, the the correts, corsets. I don't know. But other Not songs like Mr. Sandman, um, the Shaboop song that we had. <laughs> Shaboop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes put your head on my shoulder anyways mm-hmm. um i know that at, at the crown college banquet the way they always close it out yep pastor sexton sings good night sweetheart no no not pastor no he sings stand by me yeah, sure he sings something to mrs sexton every year it's not stand by me it's I don't know that doesn't that part doesn't matter. The point is that there's a group of four guys that will stand up there with their microphones and they'll sing "Good Night, Sweetheart" and then dismiss everybody. Yep, truth. All right. All right. The ultimate, most agreed upon song genre genre that the IFB and the world can agree upon. Yep, Disney. Disney music. Oh man, I used to get so angry at the girls that were like so happy and chipper and cheery at seven o'clock in the morning as we're all getting ready for classes and they're just blaring their Disney music in the dorm. Oh my gosh. Those people would make me so angry. Like, all right, I like Disney music as well. For like maybe 20 minutes at a time. It just Maybe. But I mean like, in the IFB world, because your music options are so limited, mm-hmm. Disney music is absolute hype. Yes. It's like you're going to get lit for your Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> you can be listening to Moana singing about the ocean. Yep. Yep. Or for me, Ratatouille. Yeah. You do love that. I show love it. Show. Yeah. You love Le Festine. <laughs> Le Festine is what the song is actually called. Yep. Um, but we'll just go ahead and give you guys an honorable mention. Yes. Because I know some of you guys are going, you have not talked about like the best song. Yep. So this is like Christianity, IFB Christianity and the world converging into, yes. a, into a, a sloppy wet kiss. Is that yep. How it, yep. Mm-hmm. But if, yeah. Ugh. Anyway. So honorable mention, drum roll, please. Jesus, Jesus take takes the, the wheel. wheel. Not takes the wheel. Oh, Jesus take. Because <laughs> she's not telling a, about Jesus taking the wheel. She's praying <laughs> like right. Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I she can't do it on her own. This is my first circle <laughs> hanging out over here. So but yeah, Jesus take the wheel by Carrie Underwood. Honorable mention. Honorable mention. All you right. got people in the church that love it. You got people in the world that love it. Yep. Maybe did we miss something on this list? We don't know. But listener, if we did, why don't you tell us about it? Honey, how can they tell us about it? Okay, so you guys know you can reach out to us via our email. So that's two six letters pod at gmail.com. You can also use that tag for our Instagram and our Twitter. You can slide into our DMs, however you want to do it. Also, keep those voicemails coming. We have got a couple more this week, and that makes us super excited. If you need a reminder, number is 865-351-0078. But that wraps up this week's episode. Yeah, it was a little bit of a long one. Yes, thank you guys for holding in. That was a lot that we threw at you. So if you would like to go back and listen again, our Podbean numbers would really appreciate that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm just kidding. All right. Once again, my name is Shmaboop David. And my name is Shmaboop. Or no. (laughs) Sam. (laughs) Sam. (laughs) And this is 26 26 Letters. All right. And that is it for this week's episode of the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening to our rantings about music. And if you don't already, we would love to see you guys come over and listen to the rest of the 26 Letters podcast. Yeah, that's right. Come out, find out about how the shepherds like to break the legs of their lambs, find out about the history of culottes and why we wear them, all those fun things. If it's nuanced, we have it. So thank you to Brian, JC, and Nathan for letting us steal the microphone, steal some of your audience. We appreciate it. With that being said, you guys have a great Wednesday. And as always, be sweet. Have peace. Or I think it's just peace. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. Be sure to stop by our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Give us a follow. Also, go to our website, recoveringfundamentalist.org. That's recoveringfundamentalist.org. There you can find Recovering Fundamentalist swag. You can get your t-shirts and hats. You can join our ex-fundy community. See where we're going to be having some meetups. It's the recoveringfundamentalist.org. Be sure to join us next time for the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast.